Hey, key drum. <laughs> What's up? What's up, boy? What's up? Listen, y'all, if y'all don't know who this dude is, his mother actually wrote this song. And this kid sang this song and it went viral. I'm a young black man. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Los Angeles Lakers, Mr. Quinn Cook. Quinn, how you doing, man? I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, Steve. Thanks for having me. So, see, man, when you say you have big dreams, I want everybody to listen to me on this, man. That's where it all starts. That's where it all starts. It starts with a big dream. My name is Winton. I'm just going to be helping out with this process a little bit. Um, we have uh, had a bunch of people apply to the camp, and I can't do all of this stuff by myself. So I'm going to uh, close this door real quick, and then we can get started. I'm going to just bring somebody else in to kind of help me with this interview process, and then uh, we can get going. Sound good? All right, cool. Uh, Keyshawn, you're, uh, you're on mute, and... Uh, Jaquil, you're on mute, too. Hi, I'm sorry. Can y'all hear me now? Yeah, we'll be right back. One second. Okay. Can y'all hear me? My shirt is wrinkled. I'm trying to press it. Try to press my shirt so it don't so it don't look wrinkled. Got it, ready? One, two, three, keep it pimping. <laughs> All right, let's go. One, two, three. Hey mom. Keep it <laughs> oh, 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 day. Shirt on fresh <laughs> press. Steve wow. Harvey building man. Yeah, what's up, fellas? What's How up, man? Doing? How you doing? Hi. Uh which one of you is Jaquiel? I'm right here. Hi. Okay, I got you, Jaquiel. Where is Keyshawn? I'm right here. How you doing? Oh, man, nice hair. Boy, I wish I had, I had that hair. I used to have hair like that, man. Started, I you know, I put a perm in it one time, and it just kind of fell out after that. <laughs> hey, what's up, Taj? All right. All right. It's great. All right, fellas, how y'all doing today? I'm doing good. Hey, man, let me tell you what. Uh, I like doing this, man. Uh, I enjoy talking to young men with, uh, with dreams and visions. I like talking to young men. I kind of like talking to young men that are struggling because I struggle myself. And so uh, by the grace of God, I was able to uh, get some things figured out a lot of people taught me a lot of things about my mental state. And if you can change your mental state, you can change your outcome. If you change your attitude, you change your altitude. So what I had to do as a young man, I started around 12 working on this. I started having these dreams and visions of what I really wanted to be, man. And I was, I was deep in the hood. We was poor. You know, we didn't have nothing. And I just didn't... And when I told people my dream and vision of being a TV star, man, they laughed me out the building. They said, man, you can't be on TV, you black. 
Man, you can't be on TV. We poor. Man, you can't be on TV. We live in the hood. Man, you can't be on TV. You don't know nobody on TV. Who you know on TV? I don't know. Who in this school ever been on TV? I don't know. Who, who, who in this neighborhood ever been on TV? I don't know. Which one of your relatives been on TV? I don't know. But I'm going to be on TV. And I just believed it with everything in me, man. And so uh, by the grace of God, through that faith, and we'll talk about that a little bit today, I just stayed with it. I kept them visions and dreams, man. Everything starts with a vision and a dream. All that stuff that's going on in y'all's heads, man, I want to hear a little bit about it today. But all that stuff that's going on, man, it's like it's, it's a seed that's planted in your mind. You have this seed that's planted that you want to grow, and you don't know how to grow it. I'm going to tell you how to do that today. And so we're going to give you some real answers, man. So... Maybe today we'll help you out. Let me start with Jaquil. Jaquil, how you doing, man? I'm doing amazing. How are you? See, I like that. I like that. Amazing. And you know what? Me too. I'm doing amazing. I ain't got corona. I'm still healthy. I stay in the house. I ain't been nowhere. I'm social distancing. I'm washing my hands. I don't talk to nobody. So I'm, I'm good, man. Uh, yeah. How old are you, uh, Jaquil? I'm 12 years old. 12 years old. I was surprised, man, because I was hearing about you. You live in Chicago? Yeah, I live in Chicago. You're trying to help homeless people up there. Is that true? Yeah, so I have an organization called Project I Am. I build awareness to homelessness, providing blessing bags that are full of toiletry items, like soap, tissues, socks, hand sanitizer. Also, I started using masks and gloves since corona is happening. Um, yeah. I started incorporating masks and gloves in my blessing bags, and I'm mainly putting hand sanitizer in there now. What made you start doing that, though? So when I was five years old, I went to go feed the homeless with my aunt and my cousins. I saw how they lived, how they ate, how they slept, and I really didn't understand because at five years old, I thought everybody had homes. So I went home and asked my parents if I can give them all houses, and <laughs> we, we couldn't do that. Uh, wait, 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 wait. So, you wanted to give all the homeless people houses. Yeah, I, I didn't really understand. I was five years old, so I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. So we had like a little talk, and we talked about the different things that we have on a daily basis that they don't have, and we decided to um, come up with blessing bags. Wow. That's pretty slick, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, if you could, what do you ultimately want to do with this? I mean, what, what's, what's your goal and dream for this foundation or this project that you're working on? What would you like to see happen? I know it sounds really big. It's a huge goal, but I really want to demolish homelessness. I know it sounds crazy because there's like so many homeless people in the world, right. but um, what's the result of me doing this organization if I'm only giving them a blessing bag? What are they going to do after that? They're still on the street. But right. what I do, with well, my organization, I hopefully, with the blessing bag, give them hope. Um, to get back on their feet. So I want to start doing something that I can actually help them with to get them out of the street. Um, so what I'm doing is tiny homes. That's something that I really want to do. I was going to do it this year or next year. I was planning on starting that. But since Corona happened, that got um, kind yeah. of like postponed. So but, when, you say, uh, when you say tiny homes, what do you mean by that? Like the ones I see on TV? I mean, maybe. I don't know what you watch, but tiny homes is basically like a tiny house for people who are living on the streets. Mm -hmm. so I want to be, I think it started in Detroit, so I really want to be a part of that movement um, because it will really like, dem like help demolish this um, issue. And I got a few big connections, so hopefully we can do some work with that. Hey, man, I mean, look, you said, uh, you said it's a really big goal, a really big dream. But that's how they all start, man. Everything starts with a really big dream. And I don't care, listen to me, fellas. I don't care how outlandish your dream is. Don't give up on it. I don't care how big or absurd it seems to anybody else. See, for you to say you want to end homelessness, why, why not? Why not? Suppose you don't end it for everybody, but suppose you end it for 50% of the people. That's huge. 
Yes. That's more than anybody else has ever done. So, see, man, when you say you have big dreams, I want everybody to listen to me on this, man. That's where it all starts. That's where it all starts. It starts with a big dream. If you could ask me something, uh, Jaquil, what would you want to know? So I have two questions. One is, what struggles did you overcome to get to where you are now? And the second one is, what advice do you have? Like, how should I go about starting my tiny house movement? Because I really want to kick that off. Well, it's crazy that you're trying to help the homeless because you say, what was some of my struggles I had to overcome? I was homeless. I lived in a car for three years. I mean, me, you know? And look at me now. I mean, I live in some fabulous places now, but it wasn't always the case. And I was struggling, man, when I was homeless because I felt like giving up because I thought I had reached the end of my road, man. I thought that I had done all I could do. But there's an amazing thing that happens when you have this one thing that nobody can take from you. When you have faith, and faith is the belief in things that you cannot see, if you can maintain your faith, like if you don't see no way that you can stop homelessness, but you keep the faith, you're going to end up stopping homelessness. But you have to believe in the things that you can't see. I didn't see no way that I would ever become a TV star. I did not see the way. But I just had the faith that I would. See, faith overcomes everything. I, had, I used to sell a T-shirt that said, faith don't make it easy. Faith makes it possible. And so, man, faith in, in building these, these tiny homes and faith in curing homelessness, faith in being a TV star, faith in making the football team, faith in playing in the NFL, faith in being a musician. Oh, what, what happened to Barack Obama? What did he say to himself that would make him think he could be the first black president of the United States? You know what it was? Faith. Because when he told it to everybody, they said, ain't no way. You got to be crazy. Hell, when he first told me, I said, well, hey, dog, I'll vote for you. But, mm, uh, mm, really, I don't really see America voting for no black dude president. Not in my lifetime. Matter of fact, I was convinced in Steve Harvey's lifetime that I would die before I saw a black man, the president of this country. I was convinced, but Barack Obama was convinced of something else. And as he started campaigning, his faith made believers out of a lot of us. And so we started pushing harder. We started helping him raise money. We started pressing people to get out to vote. And guess what? Barack Obama did something that was unthinkable. Unthinkable, man. So fellas, faith, faith, man, overcomes everything. I don't care how funky it is for you right now. I don't care how difficult your situation is right now. Your, your situation not always gonna be like it is today. It's not, it's going to change. Everything, name me one thing that don't change. Nothing. The word of God is the only thing that stays the exact same way all through the course of time. It's the only thing. Everything else changed. The Grand Canyon changed. You know, the moon changed positions. The wind blow different every day. Sometimes you get crops. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get a pandemic. Sometimes you don't. Everything else changes, man. Keep the faith, brothers, because that's the key, man. Those dreams you have, in, those dreams come true. They really do, man. They come true all the time. Little black dudes like you can turn yourself into something with some faith. All you have to do is start with one tiny house, just one. See, remember this, inch by inch, anything's a cinch. You want to stop homelessness for everybody. That's your eventual goal. But let's just start with one person. Mm -hmm. Let's make one person not homeless no more. Just one. 
So what we're going to do, man, is we're going we're gonna to think of something. We're going to come up with a way, hang tight, and we're going to see what we can think of so we can get one tiny house built. Let's get one family off the street, just one. Now, now once you get one, guess what you got to do? All you got to do is just go get one more. Mm -hmm. Then, after you got them two families off the street, I hate to throw you into something, but all you got to do is just get one more. Inch by inch, anything's a sin. If you keep getting one family off the street, pretty soon, everybody off the street, partner, it's just one. But see, what people do is, they sit in their house and they try to think, man, how can I build 10,000 of these tiny homes? And it becomes too daunting, and then they give up. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to start with one. And we're going to help you. So, so just sit tight. Let me talk to you. Uh, where's Keyshawn? Big hair. I'm, I'm right here. I'm What's right up, here. Freddie? How you doing? I'm good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, man, let me ask you a question. How long do it take to comb your hair in the morning? Honestly, my hair, it don't take that long for real. It only take like a good like 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Uh-huh. When it's wet, I, I, don't, I just comb it. I like that, man. I'm blessed. Thank you. My stepmother and my dad, they don't like it, but my mom loves it. Hey, man, mom let me tell you something. I had a big afro when I was in school. My father hated it, man. <laughs> I used to wear bell bottoms in school. My father hated them bell bottoms. Boy, why are you wearing them pants with them big legs on it at the bottom? Get you some man pants. It's okay. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff young people do right now that, that older people don't really agree with. That's, I mean, you know, I'm older hey. now. There's some stuff my kids do I don't agree with, but it's their life, so live your life, man. If I had some more hair, I'd probably grow it like that, too. Thank I you. To. All I got is a mustache now. <laughs> I ain't got no facial hair. I'm wishing for something now. I don't got nothing yet. Oh, it's coming. Don't worry. It's coming. Hey, so uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, man. Uh, I'm 15. I'm from Maryland. I like to play basketball. I can draw. It's a lot of stuff. You me and my draw? dad, were. yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good at drawing. I don't do it that much. Okay. Well, what about this basketball thing? I ain't the best, but I'm not the worst. I work hard, though. I always really hard, though. I'm trying, I'm trying to get there. That's my dream. You ain't got to be the best. Or you got to be one of the best. <laughs> See, uh -huh. I wasn't the greatest stand-up ever come out the game, but I was one of them, though. <laughs> I was one of them. See, I didn't, you know, because comedy is subjectional. You know, some people laugh at some people. Some people don't laugh at other people. I just wanted to be one of the great stand-ups. And when I was doing it, man, I was pretty good. I wasn't the greatest. I, n I never thought I was the greatest, but I was one of them. You know, when I, when I looked at my career and I looked at all the tickets I had sold and the concert venues I had sold out and the basketball arenas I had filled up, even after the Kings of Comedy, yeah, I was all right. So I, I just believe one of them, huh? I believe you, you were the man. Nasty. <laughs> you don't understand who you who you talking with over here. I can go over there and bust them up. Now with some cussing going on, but you understand. I don't cuss as much as I used to. Well, yes, I do. Yeah, yeah I tried to. Now nah, I cuss. I'm still cussing. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to quit cussing one time, but uh I stopped cussing for four days one time and I, I ended up with severe headaches. And so. <laughs> you gotta let it out. <laughs> yeah. I went on back to cussing and immediately felt better. I said, I <laughs> <laughs> So let me ask you a little bit about yourself, man. Uh, what's your family structure like? Me, my, my mom and my dad, they separate, they separated, but my my dad my dad's in my life we're we're close and I'm I'm glad that he found he found the lady that because my stepmother they're not married but they they've been together for a long time so I'm glad he found somebody like that because they they take care of me they take care of me man see that's that's and let me tell you something man, that's pretty big of you to say that because you know uh, adults sometimes you got to get it wrong to get it right you know mm -hmm. you got to find happiness for yourself. You know, but your mother and father, your biological mother and your biological father came together for one divine purpose, to create you. 
and you mm-hmm. hear. And that, and, and, and that was God's intent. So uh, what's your question for me, man? Talk to me. Oh, my question for you is, it, I guess it would be a personal question for me. So I'm pretty good at school, right? That, that comes easy to me. But basketball is a little bit harder. I'm not the worst player, but I'm not the best player. And I'm trying to be a professional basketball player one day. So my question for you would be, was there anything that you wanted very badly, but it was just, it just didn't come easy to you? And what did you do to obtain it? Oh, yeah, man. My life's dreams. All, all of the things I've ever wanted in my life have been difficult to accomplish. Because young men, let, let, me, let me help you with this. Success is hard. But you know what I learned, man? Success is hard. But I'm going to tell you something, man. Not being successful is hard, too. <laughs> It's really hard not being successful. And it's hard trying to become successful. So I just decided, since it's hard not being successful, and it's hard trying to be successful, hell, since it's going to be hard, I might as well get something out of it. (laughs) So every dream I ever had, I'm talking about man, how do I become one of the premier stand-ups in the country? How do I become a TV star? How do I get rich? How do I get out of this homelessness? Everything I've ever wanted, man. How do I find the chick of my dreams, man? How do I get that girl, man, that one that I really, really want? The one, man, that make my heart pat a different, man. The one that I die for, the one that when she when she blow in my ear, man, my whole body just shiver. You know what I'm saying? You ever had, that happen? You ever, have you had a little girl, man, lick you on your ear? Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, I'm trying to tell you. To, it's it's game changing, man. It's game changing. Because every all of y'all got one of them little girls down at the school, man, that when she walked by, man, you be, you lock up. You don't. Oh my God, it's, here she come. She's walking this way. And your boys go, hey man, here she come. God, here she come. And you lock up. And you're supposed to lock up because you don't know what to do right now. You don't know exactly what to say because you're scared of rejection. You don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't know what the right thing is. So it's the timing, you're in that timing age of what do I say, how do I say it, when do I say it? And should I say it? So them girls, man, they make you just like lock up. So even me wanting to meet the chick of my dreams, man, was hard. Everything you want in life is hard to attain. But if you don't attain it, it's harder. So you got to maximize your effort to make it come true. It's just tough, man. But you all are tough people. You're good in school. You want to become a professional basketball player. You ain't the best, but you got a strong work ethic. You can draw. Sometimes work ethic overcome a lot of stuff. But I got somebody, man, that could probably help you out a little bit better than that. Uh, Where's my man at? Bam! Ladies and gentlemen, from the Los Angeles Lakers, put your hands together and show your love for that damn Mr. Quinn Cook. Quinn Cook. What up, Q? I just went to his camp. Huh? I just went to his camp. You just went to his camp. We found that out. So we brought him to you this time. Quinn, how you doing, man? I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, Steve. Thanks for having me. This is this this is a dream. This is an all-time dream of mine it's just to give back and, and, and speak to you. My dad's been bragging about you to, to my family forever. Y'all went to the same high school. Y'all tar blooders. So... Um, for me to be on this platform to give back, um, it's an honor, man. Yeah, your father was a member of Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. yeah. yeah. And your, uh, your daddy came up on Eddie Road. I used to live on Eddie Road. So, yeah, 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 y'all. See, he, he, he I, that's what I grew up on. He used to brag about that my whole life. So the, oh, the dog, father, you don't understand. <laughs> you don't say let, let me tell you something, man. Yo, man, he bad boy. First of all, you can't come up on St. Clair and not be tough. That's yeah. for starters. Right. Secondly, you cannot pledge Omega Side Five 
unless you are born a certain way. Right. They, they have other groups you can go get in. Yeah. But oh, <laughs> men of Omega Psi Phi are born at birth. They are made. And your and your daddy got pressed up hard, man, at at uh, at, uh, at at Glenville. Ooh, man, your daddy. <laughs> and 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 hey, man, your 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 father, man. I just heard a lot of great things, man, about him. So I want to say it's a pleasure meeting you, young soldier. Vice versa. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hey, man. So, uh, Keyshawn, you went to uh, uh, Queen Cook's basketball camp, huh? Yes, this summer. Last summer. Last time he had it. Mm -hmm. Did you get a chance to meet him? Uh -huh, I got a chance to meet him, take a picture with him and everything. Okay, well, here we go. So I got a man, you a basketball player. I got a man that's playing at the highest level. I mean, this is it, man. I mean, you the NBA is it. There ain't no more. <laughs> so he can, he can probably help with your question. Quinn, his question was, well, go ahead and ask him the question, Keyshawn. So my question for you is, like, was there anything in your life that you wanted very badly, but it just didn't come easy to you? And what did you do to obtain it? Yeah, um, great question. Uh, I, I see your hair's getting even more crazier. I see your hair <laughs> getting crazy. Hey man, why you got your cap on? What happened? What's going on with you? I got it braided. I got my, I got it braided, so I, I'm going through some stuff. Staying in the house, I'm still social distancing, so I'm just, I'm just trying some new stuff. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> to answer your question, um, you know my testimony. Um, I spoke to you guys. Um, during 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 my camp, and I got to interact with each and every um, camper that was there, um, which was the best part for me. But um, for me, it was making the NBA, making the NBA. Um, when I was younger, I was always the smallest. I was always the the tiniest, um, and I could only dribble. You know, when I was growing up, AI was was at the top of the league, and they used to have a and one um, video, so I could only dribble. But I, I, I knew I would never really get picked like that. So uh, for me, just, just fall in love with the NBA, I always told myself, I'm going to make it. And everybody would tell me, you're too small. You'll never play this pl at this place. You'll never play at that place. And uh, I just kept pushing. Um, I, I, I would write down, you know, things that, you know, I wanted to do in my life. And at the top, it was always make the NBA. And as I got older, I got better. You know, became All-American and, and in high school and college. And, and I've always been the guy. But, you know, after winning the national championship in college and being All-American in the same year, I didn't get drafted. So, for me, it was like, ah, oh, it was cool to play high school basketball. It was cool to play college. But my dream was to make the NBA. Like, that's all I wanted. I didn't care if I didn't play none of that stuff. I just wanted to play in the NBA. And it didn't start off the way I wanted it to. I didn't get drafted. Um, and I had to go, you know, through the D-League where, you know, you make no money. You know, you, 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 you playing in front of. 30 fans, and you know, I went from playing at Duke at the highest level, playing in front of millions of people every night, to playing in front of 20 people, and you're playing on Facebook Live. And it was it was a humbling experience, but it really questioned if I really wanted to pursue um, being in the NBA. And, uh, you know, I stuck through it. I stuck with it, and I always, you know, was ready when my, when my opportunity came. But I'm still fighting it to this day, and, I, and, I, and I'm still, you know, want to, you know, become an all-star. I want to become – you know, a max player. I want to become a legendary player. But uh, making the NBA was always my dream. And, and not just making it, you know, staying in the NBA and, and having a great career. So the stuff that I, I, I was sharing with you guys in my camp, the stuff that Steve is sharing with you now, you know, we're still applying it to our lives. So, you know, I, I think that was a great question. And, uh, you know, you got to just keep going. Thank you. Let me ask you this question, man. You say, uh, how, how long would you say, you've had this dream of playing in the NBA. When do you think it started for you? Um, for me, you know, I, it started when I was at least four years old. I remember watching uh, 90, in 97, watching game one of the NBA Finals, Bulls versus the Jazz. And I remember Michael Jordan hitting the game winner, left, left pull up, left elbow, and buying Russell's face. And I remember that was it. At four years old, I had everything Michael Jordan, Anything Michael Jordan I had. So at four years old, that's when it it, it really started for me. Man, so what the reason I asked you that question is because see these guys, they they 12, 15, 16, you know, and they have these dreams, they have these ideas in their head. And when you talk, man, it lets them see for everybody that's successful, it starts with this dream. 
it starts with this vision that you have that there ain't nobody buying into but you. Yeah. They told you, quit, you was too small. Yeah. They told you all you can do is dribble. He playing in the league now. See, fellas, you got, you got, to, you, you got to block out them haters, man. You got to block out them naysayers. Them naysayers, man they, man, they used to tell me, hey, Steve, one in every 20,000 comedians will make it to the Tonight Show and become successful. Mm. I didn't, okay. So how you figure, I, you did say one, didn't you? Why don't I just be the one? See, y'all keep talking about it's impossible, but as long as there's a possibility, I don't worry about the probability. Skip the one in 20,000. Skip the 19,999 others. All I got to do is get on the Tonight Show. And let me tell you something, man. I never made it to the Tonight Show until Jay Leno was the host. But I was already kings of comedy in there. I'd already made it. So I didn't, I didn't pay attention to statistics, man. And a guy like uh, Quinn that comes on, man, and uh, has this story, man, and he come from the, you come from a man, I can't even tell you the stock you made from your father, man. Whew. See, when you, when, you, when you come out of Glenville, man, come out of St. Clair, Eddie Road, you, there, there ain't, no, ain't no chumps. Yeah. You, there just ain't none. Right. You just, it's just impossible. Right. And then your, your father plays sci-fi, and then, man, I'm talking about your daddy was like 79 in 79 at Howard. Yep, yep. Ooh. <laughs> I can't even tell you what was going on back then. <laughs> your father was pressed for show, man. He come from good stock. And all three of you young men on this call, you cut from the same thing. You know how I know? Because you want something. As long as you want something, you may you you got what it takes. Cause think of some of your peers, man. Some of them they don't even want nothing. They don't even know nothing. So you can't even tell them your dreams and visions, cause they're looking at you like you're crazy. So that's what I appreciate it. Hey Quinn, hang on for me, okay? Sure. Y'all sit tight. Hey, let me go and meet my uh my, my my next gentleman. Taj, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How about you? All right, you 16 years old? Yes. All right, tell me a little bit about yourself, Taj. Um, my name is Taj. Um, I'm a four sport athlete with Projects of Chicago. Since becoming a part of um, since becoming a part of Projects of Chicago, I've been able to have a safe outlet with my friends and socialize with others. And mm -hmm. I want to further my career in criminal justice and business management to help our society out. Oh, okay, so you you play four sports? What you play? Yes. I play football, baseball, basketball, and I also wrestle. Wrestle? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, ain't nobody grabbing me, man. <laughs> grab me, man. You got to get your hands off me, man. You can't grab me, partner. You can't, I'm, you, I'm sorry. You I'm sorry. I, I no, don't, I don't, grab me. I'm punching you in your eye. I'm going to bite you or something. I can't take <laughs> that. That's wrestling. Because <laughs> I was too skinny as a kid. I couldn't wrestle, man. Uh, how are your grades in school, man? I'm really good in school. I'm an AV student. Really? Yes, sir. Who, 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 what's your favorite basketball team? Um, the Lakers. Sorry, Glenn. You're just saying that, are you? No, nah, I'm not just saying it. <laughs> yeah. Lakers, boy, they, they was on their way. Cole, Cole. Cole. They, yeah. kids, they was on their way. We <laughs> and y'all was spending, ooh. Y'all was getting ready to get it done, man. It was, it was killing it. God, they was crushing them, man. They was letting them have it. Give me a question. What would give me? Give me something you'd like to ask. Me. Um, if I had to ask you a question, I would say, like, what are the struggles that you had to deal with when your dad wasn't around? Like, was your dad ever around? Because like, I never had a father figure. I always wanted to have a father figure. Like, I look around, I look at my friends, their fathers at their games. Their their dads always on the sidelines, helping them out, coaching them. Or the, even when there's not a game, they're at the practice working with them after practice. I never had that. I was like, man, maybe I'll be better than what I am. Maybe I'll be better at what I am than I am now if I had a dad and a father figure on me. 
Well, listen, man. Uh, I had my dad until I was 43. Uh, I'm sorry, man. When my dad passed, man, uh, it was the second worst day of my life. My worst day of my life was my mother passed. I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to do, man. I was, uh, I didn't think I was going to make it, to be honest with you. That was the worst week of my life. My father passed, and it's why I have this mentoring program. Because when my father passed, I was looking at him in that casket, man, and I was tripping because I said, man, this is, the, this is the greatest man I've ever known. And I realized that if it was not for that man, there's no way I would be who I am today. Right. Now, this was 20 years ago. My daddy died 20 years ago. And I knew right then, without him, there was, there was no Steve Harvey you see today. Because he kept me locked in, you know, even when I got off track. But it also caused me to create this mentoring program because I was sitting there saying to myself, just like this question you got, Taj, what happens to the young man that don't have a father? How does he get through life without this dude here? And that's why I formed the, the mentoring program to, be, to provide father figures for boys who are fatherless, to provide male role models for young men who don't have any. And so I can help you get that in your life because it, it is an important thing. It doesn't have to be a father, you know. Right. It can just be a mentor, a big brother figure, an yes, uncle figure. You know, I've become a lot of young yes. men who don't have my last name, I've become their uncle. Right. Hey, you know, I, a lot of celebrities call me uncle. You know, they call me all the time. Hey, Unc, man, I need to talk with you, man. Because they, they know I'm solid. You know, you, you can, look, man, everybody got their share of haters. If you're doing anything and accomplishing anything or wanting to be something or doing something somebody else in it, you're going to have haters. So I got mine. But they don't matter. Right. Man, let me tell you something. I've had so many haters counted me out. You know how many people counted me out when I was homeless? Counted me out when I lost a show here or I lost a show there and they put it all over the blogs and Steve Harvey had lost his show and he lost that show and they counted me out. You know what I found out about people that counted me out? They can't count. <laughs> they can't count, pimp. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Your ass don't know how to count. Cause man, I'm, still here. I'm still here, still balling, still knocking them down, still doing shows still being relevant. Right. I learned a lot of this from my father, but my mentoring camp, Taj, puts people together. You know, it, it, it gives a, a young man a phone number. It gives a young man somebody that he can call when he had in moments in his mind where he tried to figure out what he could do. Because if a young man does not have a role model, a young man without a role model is like an explorer without a map. You, you, can't figure, you can't figure manhood out by yourself. And you don't have to have a father to do that. You do have to have a male role model. So we can help you with that, man. And okay. I want you all to understand something. All of these tough times that you're experiencing right now, they build character. All of this stuff is what's going to make you great. See, these tough times you're having, these moments of doubt that you're trying to fight through, and you're obviously fighting through. So look here. Okay, you don't have a dad in your life, Taj, but let me tell you something about yourself, though. This is what I know about you, and I just found out. You, you play four sports. you got to be a good student to play four sports because you can't have a bad session because sport, four sports is all year long. So obviously your grades is good. So you yeah. figured that out. You've managed to get to the game without your dad. Right. Man. And you keep showing up. You know why? Because you wow. got character. You got character, man. See, Taj, you actually have what it takes to be great. Because you're forging through without even having your dad at the game like the rest of the boys. But you still on the team, hello? Right. You still hitting them. 
on varsity you're too. You getting race hits. You still shooting threes. You understand? You still Sorry. pinning people on that map. You still scoring, or you stopping somebody from scoring? You doing something? Right. So it's something in you, man, that's working. Because here's the part you have to understand, Taj. Let, let me show you this right. You are not a mistake. Your mother and father got together because God put them together. And God put them two people together because he needed to create you. That was the purpose of your dad was to create you. All right. My father job with my mother was to create me. Little did I know he would leave me. Little did Quinn know his father would pass away on him too. We ain't know none of this here. But look here. We still here. Right. And you, have, above all else, you still here. So you have exactly what it takes to be successful, man. You should hold your head up. And I got a solution for you. As a matter of fact, I got a solution for all of y'all. Hey, uh, now you play you play ball. You want you want to ask uh, Quinn something, Taj? If I was to ask Quinn a question, I would say like, how how? Yeah, I can't. I can't. I don't, I don't even know. No, nah, man, it's cool. See, listen, that's what we. Hey, look, man, we here for tough questions. That's See, look, man, you got you got to get all this out. If if you got a chance, because let me tell you something, Taj. The reason I want you to get out and ask the question. Is because, see, I didn't have no Steve Harvey when I was growing up. Right. I didn't have nobody that had gone through the, up the rough side of the mountain and accomplished their dreams and was a millionaire and was famous. And I could directly ask a question to him. How did you get famous? How did you get rich? How did you win? How did you come from nothing to something? I ain't had nobody to ask that to. Right. You play basketball, and just like uh, Keyshawn play basketball, and you got an NBA player sitting right here. And you got two men on here that done lost their fathers, and you ain't got yours. Now, if you got a coaching son, this would be a fine time for you to go on and get it out. I would ask you, who inspired you, and how did they inspire you? What made you the man? Who made you the man that you are today? Yeah, my father. My father's been my inspiration my entire life. And, and for you, right. crying out for a male role model, that, that touches me in a different way. Because that's, that's, that's my whole mission in life, is to give kids who, 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 who are searching for big brothers, searching for, for uncles. Like, I have so many uncles as well, if it was coaches or just mentors, um, pastors, anybody who I can just go call. Because at the end of the day, growing up as, as young, Black men in America today, we need that 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 strong male role model in our life. So when you, when 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 you ask a question like that, that's that's been my whole life and to this day. My dad died twelve years ago. It's not a day that goes by that I don't I don't, that. I don't hurt from that. So at the end of the day, like Steve said, you're still doing stuff that kids at your age couldn't dream of playing for. It for sports, being being a guy who's who has pride in being an A and B student. I was I was a terrible student. Keyshawn, I, I I tell them all the time in my camp. I was a terrible student. You are A and B. You are A and B student without that role model. So you're doing a beautiful job, a great job. And yeah. and, 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 and and once you get that mentor, once you get that you know go to guy that you can just go harp through and and and, and, and just you know release whatever you're going through. Your everything will take another a, another step in your life. So um, this is beautiful that you're a part of this, man. And and I'm just um, blessed to have have meeting all you guys on this call. Yeah, I think I appreciate that, man. You know, and one last thing, Taj. See, we're gonna help you get the role model you need. That's all my foundation is about. Is okay. matching up young men. Uh, with grown men, matching up boys with big brothers. And uh, we, you know, we're going to take care of that for you today. So sit tight, man. We're going to all be good. See, this is what this is all about because, I mean, it's, it's a tough world we live in. But Taj, Keyshawn, Jaquil, y'all got what it takes. So everybody sit tight.
Oh. Hey, key drum. Hey man, unmute your phone. Unmute what? Hey man. <laughs> What's up? What's up, boy? What's up? Key drum, what's going on, singer? <laughs> How you feeling? I'm doing Hey, listen, y'all. If y'all don't know who this dude is, his mother actually wrote this song. And this kid sang this song, and it went viral. And I mean, man, people started putting it putting it on their site, man. Janet Jackson, LeBron James, Snoop Dogg, put him all on his site. But you know, this Steve Harvey, you, know, <laughs> you, you might put it on your social media, but I go find it. I go looking for people, man. Hey, man, uh, congratulations. How you doing? I'm oh, doing good. Man, is that your mom, uh, uh, Janetta? Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. So tell me how this song that went viral, how it came about. The song came about uh, once we um, heard about the incident with Ahmad. It really hit home with us because Kedron ran track for his school and we would send Kedron to go um, train, he would run um, blocks over. And once we heard about that horrific incident, we had to um, tell Kedron, you cannot leave this street when you work out, run only on the street. And so I began to think how unfair it is that we have to alter our daily schedules because of something like this. And um, then when I heard about uh, Mr. Floyd um, and the most crushing part, well, all of it was crushing, but it was very devastating as a black mom when he called for his mom. And that struck something in me. I began to think about Kedron. If he ever called for me, in his most helpless state, and I'm not there to come to his rescue, how it would make me feel. And so I began to, to, to pray, and God gave me these words. And um, I told Kedron, I said, I want you to take these lyrics, and I want you to go in your room, and I want you to allow them to minister to you. Um, and so, so that's how the song came about. He came down. He's like, "Mom, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I, I'm, I'm feeling it." And we, we videoed it and we posted it. I'm a young black man doing all that I can to stand. Oh, but when I look around and I see what's being done to my kind. Every day, I'm being hard to this prey. My people don't want no trouble. We've had enough struggle. I just want to live. God protect me. I just want to live. I just want to live. We can't go out and enjoy life and live like everybody else can without having fear of something's gonna happen to us. So I felt really powerful about that, um, that I, I got to sing that song. That was the perfect time to post that because it's, all this is happening right now. Well, i tell you what, uh, I, I saw it everywhere, man. I just saw it everywhere and I fell in love with it, man. And, um, I thought because it spoke to this generation of young black boys that are growing up with the thought in their mind that this could be them and how unfair it is. And because, uh, see, I'm at an age where I've seen this happen thousand times, but there was no social media. So when social media came out and they started filming this stuff, I said to myself, oh my God, now they'll see what we all been knowing in the hood been happening 
for years that some of these police officers, not all of them, but some bad police officers have been mishandling and mistreating black, black men like this for years. And now we're going to get to the root of the problem. And then I got suddenly surprised again, because even after they see the videos, these police officers were still going home and still working and still eating and still having jobs. And I went, whoa, wait a minute. Y'all didn't see the video, we showed it to you. That was Rodney King, he got beat. They, no, they choked the man out for selling cigarettes. No, did you see the video? They choked, they shot the man eight times in the back, running from the police. He was running. The, the black young community now is angry. And Martin Luther King said it best. He said, riots are the language of the unheard. And that's what happens, man when people who are oppressed don't get heard and, and you leave them no resort but to protest. And, and this is what happens. And there's a lot of anger in this protest because ain't nobody hear it. And for your son to have this song out there, man, what moved me about the song was it was so just on point with what black men feel. You know, I'm way older than everybody on this call. And, and that song moved me. Because man, I've been feeling that way for the longest, man. I mean, what? what? What can we do? What do we do? And so I just thought it was great, man. I just wanted to have you on, man, and say congratulations. And, and kid, how old are you, Keija? I'm 12 years old. 12? Yes, sir. You got good grades? Yes, sir. What's your plans, man? What, what do you hope to do with your life? Um, I want to be a professional gospel singer. I want to minister through music and impact the nations with the gift that God gave me. I really want to touch people's lives. Um, so I really want to touch the young generation too and give out a message um, that this needs to stop and um, to always trust them. There, You could always go out and enjoy life and live. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm hoping like I have hoped so many thousands of times before that this could be a turning point for this country, that maybe if we get enough white people to be outraged, because we've been mad for hundreds of years, and, and we keep getting mad. So we need, we, we need some people who don't look like us to look at this injustice and say, you know what, this ain't right. Because I say this oftentimes, slavery didn't end because black people got tired of being slaves. We were tired from the day one, the first boat trip we were tired. But what aided us in getting rid of slavery was there were some well-meaning white people called abolitionists that said, you know what, this is wrong to do. And it helped speed up the process. Well, to stop killing these young black boys, we need white outrage. We need some well-meaning white people to get in there and start saying, you know, the same way they do for animals, you know. If they cared about us like they cared about snow leopards, that would be wonderful. But, you know, that's, that's another story here. But anyway, I wanted to say congratulations to all of you now. Hey, Quinn, uh, Quinn Cook, uh, point guard for the Lakers, man. We got a couple of surprises for the boys today. So everybody pay attention and listen up. So, Quinn, what you got for them? Um, obviously, during this COVID-19, um, you know, a lot of things have stopped and Obviously, you know, the NBA has come to a halt. And uh, when we resume, we don't know, you know, the certain protocol. They allow fans and stuff like that, the yeah. large gatherings. But as soon as everything gets back to normal and fans can start coming and, 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 and you know, we can start, you know, getting back to what we're used to, I want to invite all you guys to a Lakers game um, so you can meet myself, you can meet all of my teammates, you could shoot with us. You could do whatever. You could put us on your Instagram. You could do whatever. And also, yeah. we can do it in L.A. when we come to Chicago, wherever. Well, any game, you know, uh, I'm going to make sure – we're going to make sure that you guys are there and you can meet all my teammates, myself. And also, um, my book is coming out, the cookbook, my 10 recipes to success, my motivational book yeah. that I've oh, finished. Yeah. And, uh, you know – um. It's something that I live by. It's something that I grew up on. Uh, uh, I grew up on, you know, children's books, and that's something that's kept me dreaming and kept my mind, you know, um, just 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 alive, really. 
and uh, I partnered with the company and we've made it possible. And I want to get you guys a signed copy of my book and invite you all to a game. How does that sound? <laughs> uh, good to me. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, game. I'm, yeah, I need them tickets. Hey man, Quinn, I want to thank you, man, for uh, for 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 living out your creed, man, and being impactful to young men. And uh, your father will be proud, brother. Thank you. And just know that he watching. Thank you. I appreciate you know, that. your father. He didn't know my father, but after today, they're gonna probably meet. They're gonna go up there. They're gonna have a meeting. Sure. Because uh, them Cooks and them Harvey boys is down there doing some great things. So, so I appreciate you, man. Thank you for joining us. Now, fellas. I want to uh, get into a couple of things with y'all because, look, man, this corona thing kind of got all of us a little bit messed up. So uh, the mentoring camp that normally is Father's Day weekend, and I pick Father's Day weekend because most of the boys that come to my house, who come to my camp don't have fathers, and we end up giving them uh, mentors and father figures in their lives. But I want all of you to come to my virtual mentoring camp uh, this year. But in 2021, when things get back to normal, I'm flying each one of you young men down to Atlanta with your mom to come to my mentoring camp for boys. We've all been accepted. You're going to be a part of it. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Quinn if he would take under his wings just Taj. Take Taj and, and, uh, and Jaquil, if you would, man, and just give him your number. And if Taj and uh, Jaquil need to run something by you, man, would you help them out? Of course. That, that was my little brothers for life. Done deal. Taj? Yo, bro. Taj, you got a big brother now. Yeah. Just, yeah, I can't wait, man. Yeah. So, you know, man, just, just call him. Don't give his cell number out to nobody. You know, <laughs> if you have a question for him, and don't don't give it to your mama because, you know, he too young. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna do that. All of y'all gonna come to the camp now. Uh, Jaquil, yeah. Uh, what I want to do with you, man? I love what you're doing with your nonprofit uh, project called uh, I Am. I want to support you and all this good work that you're doing. So, my foundation is gonna give you a grant to your foundation to help the homeless. So the Stephen Marjorie Harvey Foundation going to give you a grant for $5,000 so you can get started and help pass out more of your bags and help the homeless in Chicago. And Stephen Marjorie Harvey Foundation are also going to help you with your first tiny home. <laughs> Remember I said you got to start with one. So my foundation, we're going to help you build your first tiny home, and you're going to pick the family that you want to get off the street, okay? Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, my man, we're going to do that for you now. Uh, Keyshawn. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to give you money for a haircut. <laughs> I was just messing with you. I was just messing with you. I was just messing with you. You keep the hair, man. I like the hair. It's actually kind of flat. Hey. I'd rock it. If I had it right now, I'd be playing it. But uh, this is what we're going to do, man. Uh, is your mom there? Yes. You want me to bring her in here? Yeah. Hey, mom. Yeah. Come in here real quick, please. Uh -uh. Mom, like... She's mama. Mom. <laughs> mom. Mom. Like, come on, mom. mom come in here, Steve on the... Stop, stop trying to get dressed up. Come on, come on. Mama, Steve on the computer, come on. <laughs> Hello. Hello. That's what I'm talking Hey, Mama, what's going on? Hey. How are you? Good. What's your name, sister? Kimberly Allen. I'm Keyshawn's mom, my sweet Keyshawn. I know. That's why, that's why I asked you to come in here. <laughs> so now listen to me. I know y'all been struggling a little bit because this pandemic, man, He's got everybody a little bit messed up. So what we want to do with the foundation is, just to help you out just a little bit, um, we're going to cover your rent for a month. We're going to take care of your rent for a month. That'll help you out. And then we, we're going to give uh, you and Keyshawn a 500, uh, I'm going to give you, Keyshawn, a $500 gift card so you can get some new gifts. 
So thank when you, you go thank back you. to school, go go back to school, you can be a little bit fresh, you know, <laughs> hit them with them. Thank you, know, you thank move you. Move your out the way so the girls can see your eyes. <laughs> So thank you. I, thank you. I, I just wanted you all to know that we was thinking about you, man, during this tough time, and so we wanted to help you out a little bit. All right? Thank oh, you. Thank we you. appreciate you. Thank you so much. We truly appreciate you, Steve Harvey. Thank you. Thank you, sister. I'm just trying to do what God made me here to do. That's all. Hey, now, Taj. Yes, sir. All right, look, man, I know you want to go to college, man. I know you're struggling with scholarships. Uh, <laughs> So what my team is going to do is we're going to assign someone to you, Taj, uh, that's going to help you get some scholarships. Okay. And just to start you off, uh, my foundation is going to give you your first scholarship for $5,000 so we can make sure you go to school. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Okay, cool. And uh, Now, this uh, scholarship is based on some academic guidelines. So the okay. A's and B's you got, you're going to have to keep them. And uh, my team will explain the whole thing to you, okay? Okay. Because we ain't just giving away money, man. We got to hold you accountable. So don't get this money and then try to play. Because I look for people that owe me money. <laughs> <laughs> I keep a hood like that. I keep a hood. If you owe me money, no, I'm, I'm going to find you. Right. <laughs> yeah, I got money to find you. <laughs> I spend fifteen thousand dollars to find you to get my five. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a big ass math right there. But I, <laughs> all right, man. I wanted to thank all of you and uh, Kedron, man. You done went viral, boy. You just hey, man. You know what I want you to do? I want you to come to my mentoring camp. And on the Sunday graduation, I want you to do a, 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 a selection for me at the camp. <laughs> thank you, thank you. As a thank matter you. of fact, man, a little bit later on this month, I'm going back on Facebook because Facebook has decided to do my show from my house. So my talk show will be shot from my house yes. on the 25th. I'm gonna have you as a special guest on the Steve Harvey show. I just thought, you can't go, you about to, you about to blow up. <laughs> about to blow up, pimp. <laughs> hey. So, <laughs> hey man, so we gonna make all this stuff happen, man. Uh, I really appreciate y'all, man. And also I wanna thank all of my sponsors, man. I got some great sponsors that helped make this thing come true. I wanna thank my partners at Chick-fil-A. I want to thank uh, the folks at Advancing Black Pathways and, of course, Coca-Cola. And I want to thank y'all for watching. Uh, I will see you all next Monday. I want a special thank to my main man, Queen Cook, man. <laughs> man, it was real special what you did for these dudes, man, and I appreciate that, man. Appreciate you. Too. Thanks for having hey, me. Hey, man, so when, I, when I'm saying my prayers, man, I'm talking. I tell God to mention some stuff to my father. I'm going to have our, our two old men up there in heaven hook up and meet. Sure. Taj, we're going to take care of you, man. Boy, you, no, 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 you know, Taj, you finna get Quinn Cook's number, dog. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, man. What? Can't what? get no better. Can't get no better, man. <laughs> no, that's jackpot, man. So, Keijan, I'll see you, man. I'm going to have my producers reach out to you and your mom about coming to do my show. I appreciate all y'all, man. And uh, we'll see y'all next week on Mentoring Mondays, man. I love you, fellas. Y'all be good now. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Hey, fellas, thank don't forget thank to you so pray. Much. Appreciate it. Listen to me. Don't forget to pray, man. You got to pray. Without God, you ain't going to make it. You feel me? Yes, sir. All right. I'll talk to y'all later.